Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The flight deck crew of an aircraft carrier is responsible for assisting the takeoff and landing of jets at breakneck speeds on a small strip in the middle of the ocean. However, storing these billion dollar aircraft on aircraft carriers is also a crucial task given the massive number of fighter jets and fixed-wing aircraft the carrier holds at any given moment. A surprisingly simple tool that has been around since World War II, known as the Ouija board, is used by aircraft handlers for the effective management of aircrafts on board a carrier. The Ouija board is a miniature replica of the carrier's flight deck on a scale of 1 16th inch to 1 foot. With this replica, every movement and positioning is tracked and monitored using the tiny model aircraft on the board. The Ouija board is uh, inside flight deck control. The aircraft handling officer has a physical tabletop that has scale aircraft templates, uh, and that is the way that they uh, have tracked aircraft movement and management on board the flight deck and hangar bay going back to World War II. The USS Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier has the capacity to hold up to 90 fixed wing aircraft, but only about 20 of them have room on the flight deck. Even with this reduced number, the flight deck of an aircraft carrier is so crammed that special planning is required to safely move aircraft around. This is the uh, deployable ship integration multi-touch system, and it is a deployable version of the ship integration multi-touch system, which is a lab-based digital Ouija board for processing and managing both aircraft and uh, support equipment to support either the Marine Expeditionary Unit air combat element or a uh, carrier air wing. For this reason, the majority of aircraft are stored on a lower deck in a gigantic hall called the hangar bay. Large elevators serve as the interconnection between the flight deck and the hangar bays. Measuring 85 feet long and 52 feet wide, each of these giant lifts weigh over 120 tons. The design of these elevators is critical because any inadequacy may constitute a fatal weakness in the vessel's structure. Attached to the outside of the ship, the elevator floors conveniently serve as part of the overall deck when not being lowered and raised. Even down in the hangar bay, the parking process of the aircraft is performed with utmost care. After arriving at the hangar bay door, an aircraft needs to be maneuvered from the elevator into its allotted parking position. This requires the coordination of at least three aircraft handlers. One drives a three-wheel dolly attached to the aircraft's nose landing gear Another one gives directions to help maneuver inside these tight quarters without collisions. And when the aircraft reaches its parking space, a third crewman places a heavy wedge behind the wheels. The aircraft landing gear is further chained on the spot to avoid any movements in case of ship rolling. Spanning more than two-thirds of the ship's length, the aircraft carrier hangar bay can hold up to 60 aircraft. Besides jets, the aircraft carrier also houses spare parts, fuel tanks, equipment, and even a complete maintenance facility. So we have... Uh um, a large contingent of uh, in, we call in-service repair, which is unscheduled depot maintenance artisans here. Um, we have uh, sheet metal mechanics, we have aircraft mechanics, and we have 
um, machinists. We also have planners, estimators, and QA personnel that uh, deploy around the world and all deployed aircraft carriers to re repair aircraft. Um, so what we provide is uh, depot maintenance across the fleet. The hangar also includes an engine testing area near the carrier's stern, where maintenance teams can ensure engines are working properly before taking a plane into the air. Aircraft carriers are highly specialized feats of engineering, but so are other vessels that are perhaps less impressive in size, but which play no lesser roles in the defense mission. For instance, the USNS First LT Jack Lummis is a logistics cargo vessel, serving as flagship for the Maritime Prepositioning Ship Squadron 3. Powered by two Stork Warzilla Workspore diesel engines and capable of delivering up to 27,000 horsepower, it can reach a top speed of 18 knots. The ship measures 673 feet in length and has a displacement of 43,330 tons when fully loaded. With its roll-on, roll-off capabilities and the massive causeway stored on board, it can quickly haul large quantities of lighterage ashore or to other ships at sea. Another concept that is part of the Maritime Prepositioning Force is the USNS Montford Point, a mobile landing platform for military hovercraft such as the Landing Craft Air Cushion, or LCAC. Here, it is attached to the vehicle cargo ship USNS Bob Hope while performing a skin-to-skin -skin vehicle transfer operation. It can accommodate three LCAC landing craft at a time using float-on or float-off technology, allowing it to partially submerge. While docked in a skin-to-skin -skin operation, it makes use of its built-in large mooring fenders. Cargo is hauled to and from the large staging area via a side port ramp. With these capabilities, the Monford Point supports a wide range of military missions, from humanitarian support to delivering supplies for traditional military missions. Amphibious landings on hostile beaches are considered as some of the most complex military maneuvers. They are mostly executed as combined operations uniting the efforts of military forces. The use of specialized landing craft have greatly mitigated the risks during such landing operations. However, today's highly accurate missiles can hit ships and landing craft while they are still hundreds of miles from shore, significantly putting the landing forces at risk. To mitigate this, regular exercises like the Sangyong are carried out by certain navies. Sangyong 16 is a biennial combined amphibious exercise. It's conducted by Navy and Marine Corps forces from the Republic of Korea and the United States. During this exercise, more than 13,000 combined forces execute amphibious landing training. The most critical landing phase is introduced by a barrage of heavy gunfire to clear the landing area for the assault. Smoke generators on board the landing vehicles create a smoke screen that gives the landing forces protection. During such operations, Landing with a tailwind is advantageous as the smoke screen will be carried over onto the landing zone. 
Smoke grenades are applied just before reaching the beach to create a screen. This not only gives visual protection, but also prevents detection by infrared sensors. Advancements in maritime technology have brought lots of solutions in the area of marine warfare. These modern amphibious vehicles have become indispensable in all amphibious assaults as they help bring landing grounds closer to mission spots. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.